This is a lesson on work done by a force in the calculus base mechanics portion of my channel. Uh, we're going to look at the proper definition of work done by the force, which is actually an integral and a dot product. There's vector calculus going on. If you're in the um, algebra base mechanics, uh, we simplify this by only looking at constant forces, so it only becomes a dot product, and then we can use just use the definition of a dot product, which is the magnitude of the vector multiplied by the magnitude of the other vector and cosine of the angle between them. So this is um, work done by a constant force, Fd cosine theta, and I went over this in a prior video on my channel. And at that point in time, I had mentioned the calc-based version of this equation. Work as a function of position. And an example here is a spring. I have a couple of different examples I do in this lesson. So that's what I had done before. And just to review a little bit, I did a video on vector products. You may want to go back and look at vector products and how to do a dot product for vector products. It is AB cosine of the angle between them, the magnitude of the two vectors and the angle between them. But when we're using the definition of a dot product with the components of each vector, this becomes um, a little bit more complicated, but uh, you need to know how to do a dot product explicitly with components rather than if you don't know or if you know the magnitude of the vectors. So that much said, uh, laying that foundation, work done by a force is the integral f of x d time dotted into dx. And what we're going to note is that energy is thus, because it's an integral, an area under the force versus position curve. So if I um, graphed this function of x on an x versus f graph, or F versus X graph, the energy, any area under that curve is going to be the energy or work by that force. Work, I'm going to remind you, this is a dot product, is a scalar product, it's a scalar quantity. When we do this integral, uh, I didn't put it in here, but I left this moment for me to put this in here. We're going to integrate from the initial position to the final position uh, when we evaluate the result of this integral. We'll just go from x initial to x final. Force can be any function of position. Uh, you could have, you know, power rules. You could have um, rational function. You could have any sort of exponentials. You could have any sort of force going on in here, and we'd be able to figure out those work. I'm going to remind you the sign of the work. The sign of the work is given by the dot product. So if you have two force, the displacement and the force sort of in the same direction, you're going to get a positive work, as opposed to if you're moving in some direction and the force opposes that um, displacement, you're going to end up with a minus, a relative minus sign, and the work done by this force would be negative in this situation as opposed to positive in that situation. I did want to make a note about conservative versus non-conservative forces and the work they do. Remember, work by conservative forces are not path dependent. So again, we're kind of looking at a state function where we look at um, the initial and final positions and um, and not really what kind of happened in between. So like friction is a constant force and it is a non-conservative force. So if we put friction in here, we would definitely be doing a line integral in counting up all of the um, actual distance that that force was in contact with the object and did work as opposed to like a spring force which is a conservative force gravity is also a conservative force where it doesn't matter how many times we go through a cycle or move up and down or left or right in the gravitational field all we care about is the initial and final positions you won't see this much as we're working with this because this is letting math do the work for us but as we're thinking about the math doing the work for us to calculate work um, keep in mind the difference between conservative and non-conservative forces and how you expect that energy to dependent on the path or not. 
So let's work on our first example. I picked a straightforward one with a constant force, a force of magnitude four, negative three, one, and those are in the x, y, and z directions. Notice there's no dependence on anything in here, no time, no displacement, it's just a constant force. So what I'm gonna do is our integral, if I go the integral of um, f of x, dx, if I integrate that, f is a constant value, it's just an f, so it comes outside the integral, and so you actually just get f times whatever the displacement is. And these are still vectors, so that's why I'm including um, the dot product in here. We care if they're pointing in opposite directions or the same direction, we need to do this dot product. But the integral stay um, is simplified because it's a constant force. The force does not depend on x. So so basically we're doing F dotted into delta X. Okay, so they give us this constant force displacing displaces an object from point A to point B measured in meters, find the work done. So it seems like I need to find delta X because they give me two points, but I don't care about the two points, I care about the displacement vector between those two points. So what I'm gonna do is take, um, remember a, a change is always final minus initial, so I'm gonna go x final minus x initial. So um, that means I'm gonna go five comma four comma six, and I'm gonna subtract off nine comma negative one comma zero. And this will give me the delta x vector. And so I'm gonna enclose it with brackets. I get five minus nine, which is negative four in the x direction. Four minus negative one is a positive five in the y direction, and six minus zero is a negative six in the z direction. So that's my displacement vector. Now to find the work done, I'm gonna dot the force into the displacement vector. So here's the force vector, four comma negative three, one, and I'm gonna dot that vector into my displacement, four, five, negative six. So I'm just gonna match up components with a dot product. I don't care about the cross terms. I only care about the um, plain terms here. So I'm gonna take four times negative four, add on negative three times five, and then add on one times negative six. This is a scalar value, so that's why I'm not putting any vector stuff in here. Um, when I do a dot product, it results in a scalar value. So I get negative 16 plus a negative 15 plus a negative 6. All right, and um, when I add all those together, I get negative 37. And the units on work is work as an energy, so it's negative 37 joules. So that's a pretty straightforward example. Again, this was easy because there was a constant force. I didn't have to worry about any integral because the force is just constant through the displacement. Very simple example of um, doing a, a dot product to find the work of a force. Um, I picked a couple of more examples where we're actually gonna have to do a little bit more work in order to calculate the work. Uh, so work as an integral. So we're actually gonna integrate on these. It says a bungee cord exerts a nonlinear elastic force of magnitude K1X plus K2X cubed, where the distance of the cord, X is the distance the cord is stretched where x is the distance the cord is stretched, k1 is some value, k2 is another value, and it asks how much work must be done to stretch the cord to uh, 16.7 meters. So I'm um, gonna start filling this in and just work down the page. Um, I'm gonna want an integral. Uh, my initial position I'm gonna assume is an origin and it goes to 16.7 meters. My force I'm gonna put in here and I'm gonna put in the values to 211x plus, or actually I'm gonna put a minus sign in here, minus 0.223x to the third and um, dx. Uh, I'm going to assume the bungee cord, and if I draw a picture, if we worry about this dot product, um, this dot product I'm going to assume equals one. The bungee cord is oriented up and down, so the force is 
I'm going to assume a resistive force that goes against the displacement um, or along the displacement. I'm not sure. So there's a delta x and there's the f of x. And so when I do this dot product, this dot product, because these two parallel vectors, these two vectors are parallel, the dot product equals one. So I'm not including a dot product in here because it's not required. The dot product is just one. So it turns out I just need to integrate this function with respect to x from zero to 16.7. So um, I'm going to do the power rule integration. So um, this is a power of 1. I want to increase it to 2. So I'm going to have to divide the coefficient by 2, x squared, minus this is a 3. I have to go up to 4. So I'm going to get 0 0.223 divided by 4, x to the fourth power. And then I am going to do that over the interval of 0 to 16.7 which makes this pretty easy, um, x squared and uh, zero squared and zero to the fourth power or zero. So I really have only the terms generated by the 16.7 when I evaluate it. Um, I'm still being lazy here. I'm just leaving um, the numbers as they are. Uh, I'm not curious yet about what it is. Um, times 16.7 to the fourth power. So that's the first term. Of course, we're going to subtract off zero on the end. You don't want to forget that. And you'll see in the next problem, this becomes non-zero. So when I um, run this through the calculator, um, this number here is uh, 29422.0 point something. I think it rounds to 23. Um, minus uh, this next number becomes a uh, four three three six point something I believe and so when I calculate the work here I get two five zero eight six point six eight joules right I'm just evaluating and then finding a final number I think uh, you may be asked to convert this to kilojoules, so I divide by a thousand joules per kilojoule to get it in kilojoules, so I get 25.1 kilojoules is the work done by this bungee cord exerting this force over 16.7 meters. So, um, so again, uh, we made the dot product easy here by having those two vectors in the same direction. Uh, that's usually what happens with force. Uh, we're not in working with fields where like a magnetic field is perpendicular. We don't have to worry about that here. We, we save cross products for that point in the curriculum. Um, and then um, just a power rule on the integral. So pretty straightforward if you know how to do derivatives and antiderivatives. The power rule isn't too bad. So 25.1 kilojoules. The last example I have here is another integral, work as an integral too, but notice that the force here is a much more interesting function. How much work does the force negative two over x newtons do on a particle as it moves from three to nine meters? So another thing I'm gonna assume, this is another problem where I'm gonna assume that the force um, is, uh, I'm going to say in the negative direction, negative 2x is the force, right? This is the force. And the displacement goes from 3 to 9. So you all can see that the displacement vector is 6. Um, so this is the delta x. But when we integrate, we don't want to, this dx we have to put as um, limits on our integral from 3 to 9. And then I'm going to put in here that my um, function of x for the force and then dx. And um, uh, the dot product is a one here. Okay, so I'm gonna integrate this. Uh, you may not recognize it, but I've done enough physics and um, my red flags went up. I don't know, maybe green flags. Maybe you love this sort of thing. The integral of one over x is a natural log. So I'm gonna get negative two, the natural log of x, uh, evaluated from 3 to 9. So that'll equal negative 2, natural log of 9, minus natural log 3. 
um, negative two. Natural log of nine is 2.197 something, I think. And then the natural log of three is 1.09 some somethings in there. Uh, and when you multiply this out, the work is negative 2.191, oh, 197 joules. Okay, and um, when I look at this, and I had mentioned this prior in the lesson, uh, we're seeing a negative sign on the work, which to me made sense. That's sort of how I set up the vectors here, is that the force is opposing the displacement, so I'm going to get a negative sign on the work it does on the system over that displacement. So uh, that's how you do work as a dot product and work as an integral when doing finding work done by a, a constant or non-constant force. Good luck and have fun.